Hey, truck shoppers! If you don't need full-size capabilities, but you do need a bed, you've got plenty of mid-size options. Let's see, Chevy Colorado, GMC Canyon, Toyota Tacoma, Nissan Frontier, Honda Ridgeline, ooh, Jeep Gladiator. But honestly, your car shopping homework isn't complete until you've examined the Ford Ranger. Ah, Ranger, you left for six years and expect us to just welcome you back? Okay then, welcome back. Among mid-sized pickups, the Reborn Ranger is notable, both for what it offers and what it doesn't. Do you want a V6 engine? Maybe a diesel? Move it along now, nothing to see here. At least at launch, the Ranger comes with one powertrain, a 10-speed automatic transmission linked to a 2.3-liter EcoBoost four-cylinder used in a variety of Ford products but modified for truck duty with a forged crankshaft and forged connecting rods. Wait, was that the Focus RS? If driving a truck with a boosted four-cylinder sounds like a bummer, remember, the Ranger can tow a hefty 7,500 pounds when equipped with the tow package. That's much more than a Frontier or a Tacoma. Yeah, you can haul an extra 200 pounds with GM's 2.8 liter diesel, but the point is, regardless of what's under the hood, the Ranger is a numerically capable pickup truck. Want even more numbers? Okay, the Ranger has a best-in-class 1,860 pound payload capacity. It's also efficient. Those city figures are about the best you're gonna find in Truckville. Interestingly, despite being turbocharged, Ford recommends you fill your Ranger with 87 octane. That should save you a few dimes at the pump. Okay, so you don't have any decisions to make in the engine bay, but you can choose the body and bed layout. The Super Cab includes two cozy rear seats accessed through small rear doors, plus a six-foot bed. If you favor sentient payload, choose the roughly $2,200 pricier Super Crew with its roomier four-door, five-passenger cab and shorter five-foot bed. Riding atop a fully boxed steel frame, the wheelbase and total length are identical with either version. Size aside, the bed is a reasonably functional space. You have a step here so you can go over the top, but if you pull down the tailgate, oh boy, that is undamped. You can use the corner, getting a little bit of a leg stretch, but it's not too, too hard to get in. Standard tie down points, you got a little spot here, here, and up here, and you'll notice this is a factory spray and bed liner. In fact, they even have a little sticker up here that says tough bed, just to let everybody know that you sprung for the Ford accessories. Yeah, you can put some stuff in here if you want. Cool. You know, an optional bed step a la the F-150 might be nice. Maybe they'll save that for the mid-cycle update. Where interior functionality is concerned, the rear seat backs flip forward, revealing, well, really nothing at all aside from the jack. You can also flip up the seat bottoms to reveal these hidden storage areas. And they're plastic, so you can probably get them real filthy. Fish will go there. For those truly committed to the cargo hauling lifestyle, the Super Cab offers a rear seat delete option. Friends, who needs friends? Venture past that sad, friend-free cargo zone, and you'll find rear glass featuring an available manual sliding rear window. Ford is not the only manufacturer whose rear slider operates manually, but a power slider still would have been nice. The rest of the interior is marked by cubbies, cup holders, modest center console storage, and simple controls. The interior doesn't take any big swings in the looks or functionality department, but it works well enough. In terms of occupant space, I, the quintessential average American male at 5 foot 10 inch, fit fine. There's some nice soft space here for my elbows. There's a lot of hard plastics if you poke around, but on the Lariat trim, at least this part is soft with some stitching. And the seat is squishy, long-term comfortable. That's nice. In the back seat, in this Super Crew, my knee's clear, foot space is okay, but uh, plenty of headroom. I could certainly sit back here for a little while. In the middle position, a little bit of a hump, but yeah, still workable. Hey, Tim, come sit next to me. Let's see how uncomfortable it gets. Three, three strapping guys back here. What do you think? Does this work? I like it. Well, yeah, you like it. Yeah, I could, I could use a little more room. 
<laughs> Sorry, James, that's what you get for sitting back. Note, rear space in the Super Cab is substantially reduced versus the Super Crew. We're talking a 4-inch legroom and 2.4-inch headroom deficit. And now, with roughly half of the video gone, we should probably talk about how the Ranger drives. From the driver's seat, there's a lot of glass, and it makes it easy to see out of the vehicle, giving you a really good sense of the Ranger's dimensions. Among pickup trucks, this is one of the most manageable ones you can drive. With its independent front and live axle leaf spring rear suspension, the Ford Ranger drives like a truck. Big twist, I know. That said, for a pickup truck, the Ranger rides well. Yeah, you get some of that live axle jitter action over little imperfections, but big bumps are absorbed smoothly. And as far as interior noise is concerned, well, I'm coming to a stop, so it's very quiet here. But even on the freeway, noise levels are inoffensive. Unlike me, the driver. Did I ever tell you the one about Power from a stop is ample and needlessly dramatic if you're going around a corner. But when cruising, the transmission does a really nice job of putting the engine in its power making revs range whenever you need it. Let me overtake this other Ranger and see what happens. Cruising along at 35, mashed, hit, and move. It was good. The auto stop start system is quick. When I brought my foot off the brake, the engine came right back to life. Eh, there's a little light shimmy when it shuts down or when it turns on, but uh, it doesn't bother me. I'd actually just leave it activated. If it bothers you, there's a really big wide button down here with an obvious A and a circle on it. Just mash that with your angry hand. Oh, that actually works. Huh. Okay, I know it's a truck review and nobody cares about ultimate road holding, but let's see what happens. As I steer into this corner, I'm noticing a little bit of body lean and the steering is not quite as precise as it could be. Pushes a little bit at the limit, but uh, you know, if you're a really good driver, you can really balance it on the edge of, it, edge of, edge of adhesion. As I stumble over my words, there's just so much action happening here behind the wheel of the Ranger. <clears throat> All the stuff that you don't need in a truck review. That's what that was. Given its size, the Ranger boasts a major parking advantage versus full-size trucks. For trucky usability in a manageable package, you can't beat a midsizer. Of course, being a truck, off-road abilities matter too. How nice of Ford to give us some room to play in the dirt. Four-wheel drive with shift on the fly abilities is optional, adding $4,000 or so to the price tag. That might sound like a lot, but it's typical for the segment. An electronic locking rear differential is also optional, but to really spark your Ranger's off-road credibility, spring for the $1,300 FX4 off-road package that adds an off-road tuned suspension, skid plates, this all-important sticker, and Ford's terrain management system. Choose between grass, gravel, and snow, mud and ruts, or sand, and the Ranger will adapt its throttle response, transmission, and stability control behavior accordingly. Another off-road feature is trail control, a system that manages braking and acceleration for the driver, much like cruise control for the dirt. I've already experienced trail control in the F-150 Raptor, and while it might be nice for people who are new to off-roading, for seasoned off-roaders like myself, it doesn't make much sense. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go get this thing high-centered on a berm. And here I am using crawl control to go down these little steps. Got to set at one mile per hour. I don't have to touch the brake or the throttle, and I'm just using the steering wheel. I'm only one step more involved than you are right now. Hey Mike, you want to take the wheel? I'm now exactly as involved as you are. <laughs> but I'm sure it's great for amateurs. Including destination charges, the least expensive rear drive Ranger XL Super Cab starts around $25,400 and includes six airbags, trailer sway control, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, power windows, mirrors, and door locks, and a basic 4.2-inch sync infotainment system. That pretty much covers the essentials aside from cruise control, which is optional. But if it were me, I would definitely upgrade to the 8-inch Sync 3 infotainment system with a well-sorted interface and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. It also has Alexa voice recognition. 
if you're into that sort of thing. Alexa, justify your existence. Suspiciously quiet. Select the mid-tier XLT trim and you'll swap out the XL's vinyl floors for carpeting while enhancing safety with lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, rear parking sensors, and a blind spot warning system that accounts for any trailers you might be towing. Neat. Load out the fanciest 4x4 Super Crew Lariat trim with standard adaptive cruise control and fancy options like keyless access with push button start, LED head and tail lights, embedded navigation, keypad entry, a Bang and Olufsen audio system, the previously mentioned tow package with trailer brake controller, and an engine block heater we will never use in San Diego, and you can spend more than $40,000. As you'd guess, there's various dealer installed options and appearance packages to further customize your Ranger. As of when this video was made, we still hadn't heard confirmation about a US version of the Ranger Raptor sold elsewhere in the world. Come on, Ford, you know reviewers get cranky when we have to wait. And I want to jump a Ranger now. Fooled you. Among Ranger competitors, the GMC Canyon and Chevrolet Colorado each offer a lower base price, but also less standard horsepower. The Toyota Tacoma is less efficient and similarly priced to the Ranger, but with long-term value bolstered by superior resale values. The Nissan Frontier is old, but maybe you can find a deal on one, and the Honda Ridgeline is pricier than the Ranger, but less truck-like, in all the good and bad ways you can imagine. Oh, and at press time, we hadn't driven the Jeep Gladiator yet, but something tells me it's going to be much pricier than the Ranger. Sweet top action, though. Bottom line, there's a mid-sized truck for every taste. But if you want a modern, capable, efficient, competitively priced pickup, the Ford Ranger is here to play. And now if you'll wait just a moment, you'll be treated to a truly undignified post credit scene. And check back here soon for a full review. I promise I'm going to make Micah drive it like a madwoman. With a wig on.